My name is Brian Wolf. I'm the founder and creative director of Design by Wolf and dog father of Chow Mein, the Chow Chow. I have been lucky enough to be working in the industry for over 10 years. Uh, that was after a previous career as a concept pianist. So it was a bit of a detour into design for me, but always with an interest in arts and in design. I've worked in places like Sydney, New York, LA, working currently in Mallorca, in Paris, Barcelona, uh, also more properties in New York. I'm very lucky to have a mother who values my opinion. Um, and every time she was redecorating a room in the house, I was asked, did I like the color? Did I like the fabrics? Did I approve of the furniture layouts? It can often be hard to find ways of marketing yourself as a private residential interior designer. For natural reasons, a lot of our clients are protective over their homes and their primary residences. If you visit my website, designbywolf.com, and click on projects, you'll be able to see some examples of my work. And if you click on the videos, you'll also be able to hear me play some piano. I think as a residential interior designer, it's important for me to remain agile in my approach to every project. Every client's needs is different and every project is unique. There isn't a one solution for every project. Playfulness and understated luxury. Some might say my passion for lighting is borderline obsessive. Um, as an interior designer, I rely heavily on lighting to bring the best elements of my design schemes to life. It also allows my client, the end user, to change the use of the space throughout the day with their lighting systems. As an interior designer, I have a passion and love for lighting but it is primarily focused on decorative lighting. I look to the support of my lighting designers at John Cullen to help me create a cohesive scheme and bring the architectural lighting and the decorative lighting together. I think it's important to trust in the specialist that you're working with. If you decide to hire a lighting designer and to bring them into a project, it's important to value their expertise and take the advice that they give you when designing and laying out a scheme. Honestly, I don't. Every project and every client is unique. I do like to bring old into every scheme and a great way of doing that I find is using decorative lighting. So I will look to locations like Alfie's Market or First Dibs, which is an online platform or the markets in Paris or in any of my travels. I'll find unique pieces and sometimes they're sitting in a storage unit that I'll have for years and then I'll find the right project that I can incorporate them into. It's always the ones that you can't talk about. But imagine absolute oceanfront, uninterrupted views from every room in the house, 35,000 square foot and an unlimited budget. I get asked this question a lot and the answer is always the same. I'd love the opportunity to work with the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. I think the opportunities there to blend historic British uh, heritage and a modern fashionista sense of style would be a great opportunity. I think being an interior designer has to be one of the most exciting and enjoyable careers out there. Uh, I can't imagine doing anything else. Every day is unique, every project is different, and every client's personality and requirements has a different need. Um, I love being able to draw inspiration from the various suppliers that I work with, my trips abroad, the various trade shows, my own personal travels, and the experiences I get when I'm out with my friends, whether that be a boutique bar or a restaurant or a new concert that we go to or a new artist that we see and we, we get to see the set design and the stage design and the costume design. Coming to locations like Guinevere on the King's Road, famous for their, its, its eclectic mix of products and styles, is a, a great source of inspiration for me. Actually, the bronze cast zebra in the back of this shot, uh, you might recognize from my entrance plinth for Decorex this year. Coming in here, it's, it's like a treasure trove. I get ideas and inspirations from my projects. I think it can be dangerous to follow trends to a T as an interior designer. I think it's more important to have a breadth of knowledge and understand how you can incorporate some of the current trends with trends from the past. Just a design quarter is a go-to location for me. As a designer, I come to locations to look for inspiration, but it's a great place to bring my clients for sourcing days and a way for them to find their own inspiration. With over 30 brands, CDQ is a great place for me to come and walk through various ideas and concepts with my clients. Coming to showrooms like the Tom Faulkner showroom here on Lots Road, where there is a range of finishes and materials for them all to see in real life and touch, gives them that tactile experience and really does help speed up the design process. And they give you coffee. And they give you coffee. <laughs> 
I find myself drawn to brands like Tom Faulkner because of the blend of historic craftsmanship techniques and modern design. Tom has managed to seamlessly combine the two in the production and design of his exquisite pieces, and as a result, I end up specifying him in a lot of my projects. As an interior designer, I've seen an increased demand in clients asking for seamless transitions between the indoor living spaces and the outdoor living spaces. We have to work with the landscape architects and landscape designers, the contractors and the architects on the project to come up with a solution that fits the client's brief. We're working with indoor environment and also the outdoor environment with natural light. So trying to create that seamless transition and those unique spaces for the client can often be difficult. Working in the luxury end of the residential market in London and abroad, we often see that clients are more cautious about their privacy and sharing information about the projects. Um, so a lot of the projects that we're working on, we can't actually talk about. That said, um, I'm especially proud of one of the projects we completed this year, and that's the project on our website referred to as the St. John's Wood Project, which won several awards during LDF this year. And we actually worked with John Cullen on the licensing schemes for that project. <laughs> my days can be really long and very tiring. Um, I get to work with very interesting people, but my day is also full of solving complicated problems and dealing with clients both here and abroad, working on various time zones. So it's important for me to find a way to detach from work and relax. Um, having had a previous career in music, naturally I'm drawn to elements that are music driven or arts driven. So the theater or going to places like uh, the Red Rooster in Clerkenwell for their gospel brunch on a Sunday with friends is a great way for me to unwind and relax. I'm on. I'm on too. <laughs> you can do the outtakes at the end of the video with all the funny pieces. <laughs> well, first. How many takes? Brian talked to us. I'm vodka. Um, work with someone like the Duke and Juche. The Duke and Juche? Okay. That's that one. Um, <laughs> I hire a lighting designer. Uh, <laughs> what was the one? And that's half the speed of all the other questions. <laughs> <laughs> Date me, work with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this could be my YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Have you like to relax? Well. Friends, going to the theater, um, cheeky nights out, or cheeky getaways with my friends. And uh, no, I'm going way off track now. <laughs> but the videos you'll also get me to hear, or you'll also hear me play. Um, oh, start that one again and if you have a look at some of the videos you'll also get me to hear you'll also hear me play some of oh uh. perfect do that one again <laughs> <laughs> Which camera was it? That one? This one. And the lighting's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you did great. <clears throat> Here we go, take 392. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Zane's hair <heard> on. <laughs>